The unique thing about the insurance business is this. Nobody wakes up in the morning and thinks, I want to buy some insurance today. That's the last thing anybody's thinking about. They think, I want to go on a holiday or I want to buy an iPad mini. They're not thinking I'm going to pass away tomorrow. They're not thinking I'm going to get cancer tomorrow. They're not thinking about their future in terms of retirement or children's education. It's only when a financial advisor sits down with a person and has a conversation with him to find out what's his future, what are his dreams, what he's worried about, and how can I help him. And in that conversation, that's when the desire to do something about it arouses. You see, insurance is not a desirable product. iPhone is a desirable product. People queue up to buy iPhones. Nobody queues up to buy insurance. Um, that's exactly the reason why we get compensated so well, is to be, the ability to have this conversation with someone and influence him to help him to think. Because you cannot wait for disaster to happen in your life and then think, oh, I better do something about it. It's too late. You have to plan for it before it happens. So I have a process called CSI. I mean, when I sit down with a client, I say, this is what financial planning is all about. It's CSI. Then you ask me what is CSI. I say, the first thing you need to focus on is C. C stands for coverage. And under coverage, there are five components to look at. Life, disability, critical illness, accident, hospitalization. If you're covered for these five things, you're comprehensively covered. Then I say, why should I buy life insurance? I say, the only reason to buy life insurance is because you love someone or somebody loves you. You don't love anybody and nobody loves you, you don't need to buy. <laughs> why? I say, because you're con the only reason to buy life insurance, if I pass away today, I want someone else to have a good life even though I'm not on planet Earth anymore. And you only do that because you love someone. It's a love contract, right? I want the people left behind to have a good life. So... That's why you buy life insurance. And then for disability and critical illness coverage, it's very common. Can people be disabled? Yes. Can people be critically ill? Yes. Do you need protection? Yes. Accidents, very common. Hospitalization. Now, once we have got someone comprehensively covered, then we go to S, which is savings. So savings, there's two components, short-term and long-term savings. People save up money for short-term to buy a house, start a business, get married. Long-term savings will be like retirement planning, education planning. And once we have... Completed savings, you go to I, which is investments. And the only reason to invest money is to grow more money. Now, if you leave all the money in the bank, the interest rates in Singapore is about 0.125%. Even if you have completely clueless about investing money, you take a portion of that of your money and put it in an endowment plan in an insurance company, you straight off get about 3 to 4%. Of course, if you're a bit more investment savvy, you get 6, 7, 8% returns. But which is why the wealthy get wealthier, because they're very knowledgeable investing and growing money and uh, people who don't have the knowledge struggle um, so whatever income you earn every month general rule of thumb 10% should be set aside for coverage 10% for savings and 10% for investments don't talk about savings and investments until you're comprehensively covered why any one of these things happen that disability illness accident hospitalization is going to wipe out your savings and investments so focus on coverage first and then we focus on savings and then we go to investment. Don't need to talk about investments until you have some savings first. Save up some money, then we can talk, start talking about investments. The only two other areas to look at is tax planning and estate planning. Tax planning, there are ways and methods to reduce your taxes. Estate planning is about writing a will, setting up trust, doing nominations. All this comes under estate planning. So those are the five components of financial planning. And when we meet our clients, this is what we do. We focus on coverage, savings, investments, tax planning, and estate planning. Whenever my clients tell me, Subash, I've got enough uh, money for retirement. I think retirement is the most important thing. Then the question is, what if? What if critical illness strikes? What if dis disability strikes? What if you are hospitalized? How is it going to impact your retirement? So by asking questions, he has to think. and say, yeah, I never thought about it. So I see, doesn't it make sense to, to have a portion of your income to make sure... You, take care of your worst case scenarios. And whatever remaining income you have, you can set aside for your retirement. So through asking questions, he realizes that he, he needs to do something. I mean, I do go to the extreme. I always tell people, unless you have a deal with God that you'll never be disabled and got critical illness, then okay, fine. But do you have that deal? You say, no, I don't have that deal. Then protect yourself, right? So, but the point is this, I'm not asking to put every single cent of your income to buying insurance. A portion of your income has to be set aside to protect yourself. This is a non-negotiable. If you drive a car, having an airbag is non-negotiable, right? 
you can't remove, you can't buy a car and tell the person, okay, remove the airbag. I don't want the airbag. Can you lower the cost of the car? He's not going to do it. It's a non-negotiable. In the same way, whatever income you earn per month, a portion of your income being set aside for insurance is a non-negotiable. Because that is certain, chances of critical illness, disability is happening is high. Hospitalization is high. A portion of your income has to be set aside. 